the first thing I want to ask you about is this video. You went with a video camera to Capitol Hill and you found a bunch of members of Congress who are vehement supporters of Israel and you asked them what their reason is for being so supportive of Israel and many cited their religious dogma, specifically their belief that Israel has to be strong in order for Jesus to return as the reason. I want to show the audience this video in a second and ask you about it. But before I do, what was the kind of intention or the motive that you had to go to Capitol Hill and ask these questions? Well, th this particular clip is from last year. I interviewed a number of lawmakers as part of a film, Prayer for Armageddon. It's a Norwegian documentary that looks at the influence of Christian Zionists in U.S.-Israel policy, um, looks at the, kind of the history there, at the kind of outsized influence of some of these evangelical voters and politicians in shaping the conflict. Um, but I just got back from another D.C. trip where I, I filmed and interviewed uh, even more lawmakers and, and heard similar responses. You know, there are um, probably about 40 or 50 uh, Christian and Zionists explicitly uh, Christian Zionist lawmakers in Congress. Uh, these are people that are generally Republicans um, that are in the House majority right now that are shaping the decisions around what the U.S. does in terms of this current conflict. And the issue, there's many issues here, but the primary issue is that rather than seeking, you know, what the U.S. interest or the human rights interest or even the Israeli interest, um, many of these lawmakers say explicitly that they support uh, Israel uh, with weapons and money. Uh, they want Jewish control of Jerusalem as part of an end time prophecy uh, for the second coming of Christ. They, they see a prophetic war of Armageddon between Israel and its enemies as a necessary uh, moment uh, for bringing about uh, you know, an end time scenario where there's a rapture event, where believers are raptured to heaven, uh, where non-believers are slayed or converted, um, you know, it's an apocalyptic event, um, but many of them take uh, these prophecies in the Bible uh, very literally. Yeah, there's such an irony to it because for a long time, these rapture theories were considered to be anti-Semitic because when Jesus returns, what he does is he takes all the Jews and either gives them a last chance to accept him as Lord and Savior, which of course Jews under their religious beliefs don't, or he sends them all to hell. In fact, I think a lot of these theories say that no, the Jews are going to hell, and yet the Israelis don't care because they don't believe in that. And so they're more than happy to accept this theory as a way to ensure support for Israel and Washington. And, you know, we interviewed a couple months ago John Mearsheimer, and then we interviewed last uh, two weeks ago Stephen Walt, the two co-authors of the book The Israel Lobby, which talks about why U.S. support for Israel has been such a successful bipartisan consensus. And they point out, obviously, there are American Jews who have affinity for Israel, and then there are people who just are national security hawks and warmongers who see Israel as an important partner, but there's a huge number of American evangelicals in the United States and in Congress who just support Israel for purely religious reasons, purely because of religious dogma involving the rapture. So let's show this video that you posted and tell us uh, which members of Congress you spoke to. Uh, I talked to, in this clip, uh, Pete Sessions uh, of Texas, uh, former NRCC chair, um, Tim Burchett. Uh, he's a kind of a populist uh, Republican lawmaker from Tennessee, and Lauren Boebert uh, from Colorado. Hey, let's listen to what they have to say about why they support Israel. We, we talked to uh, members of Congress about Israel and the U.S.'s relationship. All right, y'all go. The U.S has an intrinsic interest in making sure that Israel not only receives our best prayers and offers of success, but our armaments, our money, and our ability to make sure that in a very dangerous reason, this democracy survives. There are some uh, biblical prophecies that say that control of, of Jerusalem by the Jews uh, is important for the second coming of, of Christ. This entire matter is based upon faith of our maker, of our creator, but it's also faith of a chosen people. Can you ask why the Democrats um, using our law enforcement officers and political pawns 
the Democrats who have been campaigning to defund our law enforcement as their people, BLM and Antifa, riot and loot in the streets. How would you like to see the Capitol Police on there? The new government in Israel, can you talk a little bit about the importance of the U.S. relationship with Israel? There have been two nations created to glorify God, Israel and the United States of America. I will bless both. I will honor both. I will do all I can to stand and defend them. Thank you, Congresswoman. Take care. Karen, do you have a quick second? Sure, man. Do you think there's a role of uh, religious extremism here in the U.S. funding and shaping the, the conflict? I mean, there are a lot of folks who are part of the evangelical movement that want to support Israel. To support yeah, Israel. Yeah, and yeah. we don't really kind of see that that same kind of constituent group pushing the other way. Yeah, I wouldn't label the Baptist or the uh, evangelical community as extreme because I believe feel like they're following the scripture and what the scripture says about Israel. Those who bless Israel will be blessed. I mean, they, they take it literal, and I'm one of those people. You know, there's some Christian Zionists that do believe in some of these biblical prophecies, and they're very controversial within, even within the Christian Zionist evangelical the community. Is. Yeah, and yeah. believing in Armageddon that there will be a final battle around Jerusalem, and that after that battle, you know, um, there's a judgment day. Jews will be killed or converted. Uh, Jesus will come back. There's going to be a rapture event. Um, what do you think about those kind of prophecies? I believe Jesus will come back, and I'm and I'm going to be on His side. So we've had interactions before with Congressman Burchett. I find him very smart. I find him very clever. And all three of them, to their credit, were very honest and candid about the role that their religious beliefs are playing and why they support Israel. What's wrong with that? Look, I appreciate his candor, too. And But the, the issue here is that uh, we need lawmakers who look at this from a, an American perspective, from a perspective of uh, keeping peace and, and keeping America out of a, you know, a gigantic escalation that brings us into war with Iran or uh, Iraq or Lebanon. There, there's talk of, um, on Capitol Hill now that uh, we need war authorization to allow the U.S. to launch a preemptive strike on the proxy militias allied and funded by Iran. Those are Shia militias in, in Iraq, Hezbollah in Lebanon, on Hamas and potentially even the Houthis in Yemen. Uh, for some of these Christian Zionists, in, in their worldview, um, in, in this final war for Armageddon, uh, in the Book of Revelations, they talk about uh, the, this final battle with Og and Magog, these evil empires. Uh, some of these televangelists and Christian Zionist leaders say that the equivalent of, this, of these evil empires are Iran. They say that to fulfill this prophecy, the U.S. needs to be on Israel's side to strike at Iran. So rather than look at what is the US or is Israeli or Palestinian interest, what, what's the interest of, uh, of the region, there are a large number of lawmakers who are looking at this through a lens of how do we bring about a biblical prophecy to, to bring back the second coming of Christ. So Lee, uh, and by the way, President and uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu and the Israelis have long exploited this. In fact, Prime Minister Netanyahu announcing the ground invasion um, as imminent, said, quote, we shall realize the prophecy of Isaiah, which is one of those messianic Old Testament prophecies that these preachers cite as seeing Israel and the strong Israel as a precursor to the Armageddon and to the rapture. So they're purposely kind of feeding this because, as I said, even though it's sort of an anti-Semitic theory, it's a time when all Jews get vanished, vanquished to hell finally. Since they don't believe in it, they're happy to, to humor it in this very jaded way because they know it results in support for Israel. Um, Lee, let me just no, that's right. well, go ahead. Well, can I, can I just add one yeah, quick yeah. thing to that? You know, I'm going to publish a story on my Substack, leafhung.com tonight, that looks at this, and there, there are a number of Israeli ambassadors. It's not just Netanyahu. They're, they're all kind of making this very loud dog whistle to the American evangelical community. Um, the Israeli ambassador to the UN also cited Isaiah and appeared at Christians United for Israel uh, last Sunday, talking about the need for American evangelicals to stand with us on the front lines of this war, and in doing so, not fighting Hamas literally, but to lobby their lawmakers to support more military aid to Israel in this moment. You know, and this is a relationship that has been nurtured for 40 years, you know, going back to Menachem Begin, who went out and, and, and flew 
uh, Jerry Falwell uh, to Israel back in the late 70s. Um, you, you know, this is this is a very tight relationship. Netanyahu works very closely uh, with some of the most extreme right. Uh, uh, Christian Zionists in this country. Yeah, and a lot of attention gets paid to the support for Israel in the U.S. as a result of American Jewish affinity for Israel. This is obviously a major reason as well why so many politicians devote incredible amounts of energy to pledging full-scale support for Israel. Nikki Haley said today, our position is when the Israelis ask for something, no matter what it is, you give it to them, no questions asked. And it's like, can't imagine why a politician would say something like that that's insane about a foreign country but the reason is because she needs these voters who feel very strongly i personally get a little nervous when we talk about a nuclear power and a war involving people who are very religiously uh convicted on both sides and where rapture and armageddon scenarios are a major part of at least some of the people's support for escalating this war Thanks for watching this clip from System Update, our live show that airs every Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern, exclusively on Rumble. You can catch the full nightly shows live or view the backlog of episodes for free on our Rumble page. You can also find full episodes the morning after they air across all major podcasting platforms, including Spotify and Apple. All the information you need is linked below. We hope to see you there.